ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of First 15 here on Pastiche of Skin. It's an absolute wonder to have you. Thank you very much for coming back. It's... I've got a cool game to show you. It's World of Final Fantasy. Yes! It's got a soon-to-be-released date. I'm looking forward to trying this out. This game looks weird. It really does. It's it's all of the Final Fantasies together in some kind of, like almost like Kingdom Hearts-style mix-mash with... A bunch of other mechanics that just seem to be like shoehorned and punched in from other games. Uh, other games in the series, that is. Let's just check it out. Honestly, let, let's just jump into the dungeon demo and see what's here. Now, there's a lot of kind of basic instructions on the controls. All that was was just kind of like showing how to actually turn your character into this little tiny version. And then also how to change it back to a full-size character. I was glad about that because I was worried that, that it was just going to be in the cutscenes, kind of like the way they did in the old video games where you, you're us. only like the giant-sized character in the singular little bits and pieces. But no, it's obviously like the, the third-party characters that we're seeing here. The other ones, like example, the Warrior of Light, are the ones that are constantly in tiny mode. We're not going to see them as like big heroes, but our main characters are actually in this world and can swap back and forth between them, which is what probably makes them special. I want to know why, I want to know more, I want to know what what these mirages that they refer to are actually doing and why this world is so weird. And it's great to see characters from all the different series articulated in this way. Especially with the fact that they do keep their original voice actors for a fair few of them, as far as I can recognize. I mean, at least I recognize Lightning, I recognize Cloud's voice actor, and the other ones they chose for other characters make sense to me. But yeah, this is this is a nostalgia trip through the history of Final Fantasy. Every single one of these little mirages are cute and adorable in their own way, and I'm sure they've got a lot of important stuff to tell me in the stories to give me quests. I hope and assume that you can kind of gather these people as well, to be part of your team. There's lots to see. It's, ah, I can just sit here with a big dopey grin on my face. Edgar! Ah. Sorry. <laughs> Everything from Final Fantasy right 1 now. through to the modern age is all represented in this game it's from the character designs to the enemies that you fight uh, it's not interesting i couldn't stop smiling the entire way through this demo it just felt like uh, i was going back and getting to my favorite characters speaking of all of them i actually am a huge breeze. fan of squall <laughs> i think i modeled my teenage years on him um only thing i didn't have was the furry collar to go along with it but they're not just there to be talked to. I mean, the, I can tell that they're going to be involved in the combat and the gameplay because we're using Titus as one of our summons. I like the idea of being able to summon the characters from history. I, I, I'm sure Shiva and the rest will show up in their own way. In fact, one of them does kind of show up as part of a boss fight in this. But to have them to be the summon characters come in to do a heavy attack, just it, it, it makes me happy. And even if you can hear that in the background, it's a remixed kind of like change of the Blitzball music and to Zanarkand at the same time while he's doing his uh, ultimate uh, so I'm not, I'm not thinking someone um, <laughs> an ultimate limit break I suppose oh, it's, it's all, it's, this game's so good that my smiley face is actually making it more difficult for me to actually kind of enunciate my thoughts about what I'm enjoying in this game now the game itself the game world looks pretty it's seems fairly simplified and the enemies in it are reasonably uh, Reasonably ex expansive is a way to probably describe them. I'm sure every section, every world is going to have the same five or six batches that we have to go through. But the, in the combat, these random encounters that we'd normally just associate with being grindy or getting items or chasing down stuff has a much more important flow to the game because whenever you're fighting these enemies, you can... After scanning them, you can find ways that actually weaken them and create a prism tunity or prism prism opportunity. <laughs> I'm trying to think of actually a way to describe the words in for it. Because all the fights in this game are Pokemon fights. Every time you're fighting a creature that's actually uh, one of the, the the random randos, like a randomly generated characters or villains, you can capture the creature and add them to the stack of characters that you have bouncing on your head in combat. It blows my mind. This is Pokemon. This, they, they essentially turned the Final Fantasy universe into a Pokemon game. This is glorious. I, I can't. I can't articulate it in my head. Just because uh, 
I imagine that a lot of people that are Pokemon fans would probably go like, oh, that's kind of like a ripoff. It's a bit cheesy. And I'm like, no, no, man. You, you don't own the monster hunting genre all to yourself. You have the monster hunting and training genre kind of slightly locked up because Digimon didn't do that quite as well than Pokemon did. But I am completely on board for an alternate kind of like monster hunter gathering and training game. Especially whenever it's wrapped around a skin of something that I really recognize and know. And it's clever. It's very, very clever to use some of such a long lineage and large character base as Final Fantasy. Because even, even just looking at this game, if they started doing DLC packs of more creatures and characters and summons from Final Fantasy games that aren't currently represented, kind of like the way they did with a Decidia or the, uh, what was, I can't remember the name of the rhythm based uh, Final Fantasy game, the one that was actually, um, you had downloadable tracks. Just having these extra alternate characters and stuff would make me come back to play this game again just to see the combinations that you could make out of it. Oh, man, yeah, so I just caught a chocobo over there. I gotta say what it is. This is Pokemon. I'm, I, I, I get to name the character, so my first one I caught was Pokemon. I'm gonna hold on to Pokemon. Pokemon! <laughs> because even the, the fact that the Chocobo looks like a Pokemon is kind of convenient for it to be the first one that you use. Uh, I, can't, I can't articulate anymore how happy I am about this basic mechanic of the game. So, unlike Pokeballs or Pokemon, Pokemon trainers, I've seen Pokemon a lot in this, uh, this kind of like look back because that's what this game is! You don't, you don't keep them in your Pokeballs, you don't have them call out randomly during battle. You select a stack, you might have found it a little bit weird seeing that the characters were sitting on top of each other in combat. They stack together for um, a cumulative effect of power, but also to make combinations of spells the same way you would if you were playing, say, Chrono Trigger where you had uh, uh, dual arts or triple arts that you did with different characters, and each one of them have a different size. You could see that the Pokemon, <laughs> my Pokemon, the Chocobo, had small and medium because it could be grow up to be another one. And then of course there you had the Behemoth was large. Now you can see the way it works whenever you're using them, that you have them stack one into other, large, on, large underneath a medium, a medium underneath a small, and that's how you build them back and forth. But it changes whenever you use your characters to do um, large or small, mattering on your... Uh, if you go for the SD style, or if you go for the full size, so it matters what ones you can stack underneath or whatever, because your main character is always going to be the large, so you have a large, a medium, and a small kind of stacked in that way. It's It ends up giving itself dozens of combinations for dozens of characters in different skill sets that you're going to level up individually, and that, that, just, just the, 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 the table of combination attacks and powers and strength alone make me really, really happy. It makes the, it's the, it makes the Final Fantasy spreadsheet fan in me really, really happy. And that's a little bit sad, but super entertaining. Leveling up all the characters is pretty much revolved around using a sphere system grid like Final Fantasy X. I'm kind of glad to see this come back because the Seer Grid was, it's, in its basic way, it gave a very easily led path to go along to unlock things. But in the harder difficulties, in the um, ex the Extreme Edition, I suppose, the International Extreme Edition of any of the of Final Fantasy X games, the Sphere Grid allowed you to really customize how you built your character. You'd give them different skill sets. I mean, you hit key points on it, but everything in between was actually like whether or not you're focused on magic, strength, or whatever else. And this, the grids do appear to be a lot smaller, but there appears to be a lot more of them. Almost kind of like um, Dress Fears, I think, was actually in the Intent 2, where there was actually uh, different ones and combinations whenever they worked together. And this, it allows you to affect the transformation or the, uh, the development of each creature that you catch, which then also means if you're, you're fighting with one, you could actually have one built towards a strength spec. You can have one that's built towards a magic spec. You don't have to worry about building one character out in one way, you can build out as many of them as you can capture. <laughs> it means that not having multiple saves on different types, you can experiment a wee bit as long as you're willing to put the grind time in to level up the character the way you want to level it up, depending on how many seeds or how many uh, empty spheres there are available in that particular grid. Ah, oh, so versatile. 
It's like taking the versatility of one, applying it to the versatility of another, and then just letting the multitude of possibilities and combinations work. I am wondering how easy it is going to be to just snap this game's kind of engine or snap this game's difficulty level over your knee because of giving that large, wi large and wide base of creativity in how you're going to be using your characters. As it is now, I didn't seem to have any problems with the demo part of this. I'm sure it will have uh, much more difficult bosses and stuff, but like most Final Fantasy games and most Square Enix games, there's always a way to just make it about completing the story and not about worrying about difficulty because they, they can't cover for all the possibilities of what fans are going to do. Like Final Fantasy VIII had its card and, uh, well, card and refining system which completely destroyed the difficulty level of the game seven had a few spells that actually were able to get very early on that made majority of the game simple to play through and then it, later on in the game you're well prepared and easy uh, very capable of actually burning through the rest of the content uh, every game kind of has had that but uh most recently they're a little less so right so you have like little bits and pieces of this make me think more of pokemon Kind of like the way you can drop your characters in for uh, into a storage box while, and select the ones that you're going to have on you at any one time. I mean, as you can see, there's a slots for 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 all together. And you're not going to use all those at the same time. I think it's like the combination was a 3 and 3 at most on each one of them. But I imagine if you wanted to have an alternate like layout or different moveset list or their stats are a little... I think the one thing I was trying to get across is just that there's a lot of versatility in this game already that I, I I just I'm glad to see this and heavily focused on the mechanics in this particular video in this particular demo because I want to see what's coming next for the story like that's uh, with the variety of characters the all variety right, of creatures that you can Come capture on, and the fact that they're all really recognizable from the entirety of the run of Final Fantasy games I want to know what's attacking this, what is affecting these characters, what's going to give me a reason to run into summons and be able to capture them as monsters. It's, I, it, all of these bits and pieces are clamped together in these little kind of like cutscene moments that are shown as extra little video demos uh, at the tail end of the of this demo. And they all seem to be cool moments, interesting character styles, all things that are actually recognizable from other games, but also could just be... A, the little summons that each ha that comes off for each character as they go along. I want to see what the story is now. That's what that's what intrigues me next. Say, not just the character moments or the summons and the mechanics of the game. I've seen that now. I'm hyped for that. What I want to know now is what happens next. What what is the story of this world of Final Fantasy? Like what what is the legends and tales that we're going to hear about it? Uh, there's just so much to look forward to. Oh man, yes, thank you very much for watching, guys. I, I went on a full ramble rant there because I'm honest to God excited. I am properly hyped for this. And it's, it's going to be a really interesting couple of months. This is, a, this is a Final Fantasy Christmas for me because we're going to have 15 out, we're going to have this out, and I'm willing to bet I'm going to lose so much time <laughs> playing them. And I really want to get them just for part and parcel of the purpose of being able to play these games in front of you guys as well so these these are like my expectation is that i'm going to probably stream the hell out of this and hopefully kind of bring a couple of people in to actually sit and enjoy it along with me i'm even i'm even kind of like regretting seeing these clips of video <laughs> and hearing these little kind of character moments because i want to have them for the first time playing the game but obviously you kind of have to you have to preview to kind of understand what's going on in front of you in the world i <laughs> I'd almost want to go, like, after playing this, I kind of wish I'd gone in blind and just bought it on hope and faith. But with the pricing of having both 15 and this out very, very close together, I'm, I'm actually at the, at the moment kind of, like, debating whether or not to cancel my pre-order for 15 and wait and see how it works out and take this as a known quantity because even with uh, the access to the Platinum demo, I wish I had the one from Final Fantasy uh, Zero HD or Type Zero HD. So I could really get into playing the mechanics of 15, but I didn't really feel that much 
of enjoyment of the combat in the Platinum demo whenever you're fighting the one <laughs> character that you get to fight in it. In this, I got to fight a fair amount of characters, I got to figure out um, ways I could play and trick with the system and how to level it up. I, I, this game has me more hyped than the main Final Fantasy series now because of all the things I've seen. So, what do we do next, guys? Like. We've only got so long to wait for it. It's, what, the 28th of this month that this game comes out? And I think, uh, was it 40 days from now? So we've got... Uh, no, this is the 28th of November, not the 20th of October, is it? Yes, 20th of October, this is coming out, isn't it? <laughs> I'm even losing track. There we go, there's actually a quick reminder <laughs> when the release date is. Thank you very much, Final Fantasy, for helping out. Guys, thank you very much for watching. This has been... Um, a rambling, hyped up, fanboy, trembling conversation, one-sided completely, about the virtues of Worlds of Final Fantasy. Obviously this has been a bit of a word salad and I've said an uh, absolute shit ton. If you have any questions or thoughts or commentary about how World of Final Fantasy looks, make sure to drop them in the comments underneath. I hope you've liked the video. If you liked it, there's a like button there. And if you disliked it, there's a dislike button right next to it. And always uh, make sure that you subscribe to the channel because there'll be plenty of videos coming out every single week. So until that time and until the next time, I will see you all you dudes in the next video. Bye.